Hello, it's John Heaton, and today I'm going to, it's quite an ambitious one, this one, I'm going to try and take you through my variations of the Beatles Apple label from my collection. So, living in Hungary, I'm kind of lucky in one sense to pick up uh, quite a few non-UK, non-US pressings, so I'll be showing those and trying to point out some variations between the different countries. Um, I'm going to start off with how the Beatles launched their record label in the autumn of 68 with the Hey Jude single and, and three others and then the first album to come out was the George Harrison Wonderwall um, on Apple. I don't actually have any original um, Beatles or George Harrison, I don't have that on original uh, um, Apple but I, but I do know that the, when they re-released the new vinyl of Abbey Road and the White Album they did a pretty good job in replicating the original Apple so this is a spanking brand new copy and it's beautiful to see and uh, that was quite a dark green apple used for Abbey Road um, same for the White Album uh, <clears throat> and a, about 10 days after the White Album came out James Taylor released his debut album on Apple and uh, this is an original from 68 and it has the original um, apple in a sleeve here and uh, you can see that original dark green apple so that's um, pretty nice pretty pleased to have that got a lot of non Beatles Apple albums but nowhere near a comprehensive collection I think you Andy Brooks have probably got more than me but uh, I'll try and pick up the remaining if and when I see them uh, so then what happened in this well let, let me talk about the US Apple as well because we've got the Let It Be album which came out in 1970 was remarkable mainly for having a red apple and you can see the red background the dark red background as well on the on the front and the back um, so that was unique because in the UK the let it be album came out on the green apple um, and uh, even the US copy came with a, a gatefold sleeve and stuff uh, a US, the, US, the more normal US green apple was as seen on the, the September 1970 Bow Coops of Blues from Ringo. It's a slightly different, lighter green apple. Um, and so we picked that up. This is my son's copy of Bow Coops of Blues because my copy is UK. And uh, it's going to take too long to put these back in the sleeve, I think. So I'll do that later. And then what happened in the 70s is, because I bought my first Beatles albums in the late 70s and they'd got rid of the original dark green apple and replaced it with a lighter version. And so when I picked up Let It Be in 79, uh, this, was, this was the apple which was commonplace at the time. And I seem to remember that same apple was on the John Lennon Mind Games and John Lennon Walls and Bridges album. So. Uh, that's what features on my original, a lot of my original Beatles albums. Um, I'll show you the, what happened in the 90s when they came out with the BBC. They ditched the late 70s Apple, mid 70s Apple and came up with a brand new Apple. And they had the new logo for the Beatles, which is of its time, 94. The same was used for the anthology. I don't think it works particularly well. I think I prefer the original uh, print on the original albums, but uh, fairly small criticism. Then we've got um, some Indian pressings to show you. So this is a rather bad condition of Abbey Road, but just interesting to see um, the Indian apple, which is, again, slightly, slightly different from others. Um, to say not in good condition uh, the guy in the record shop let me let me have that for free actually uh, and then band on the run um, which was not on Apple in the US or or the UK um, lovely green apple there from India different from the Abbey Road apple as you noticed and uh, yes James Griffiths I have your copy ready and I'm gonna send it to you as soon as I get over to England um, thank you for the squeeze album uh, and then rock and roll music is also on Apple, I won't show you that. And then some Yugoslav pressings, uh, they're particularly common in 
Budapest. I find them quite a few, quite often in the local record shops. This is a Sentimental Journey copy with the, the darker sky, which is interesting. Um, not going to show you every single um, record, but the I think the most interesting ones are the George Harrison reduced to a double album from a triple, getting rid of the apple jam and on the green apple. And of course it was on the orange apple in the US and uh, it's interesting how the word stereo is in far bigger letters than the words All Things Must Pass or George Harrison. So maybe at the time they were really trying to push it, uh, the stereo concept. Uh, Yugoslav Imagine, noticeable mainly for the fact that we have a kind of faded greyish green apple, which is uh, you won't see in uh, on the US copies or the U UK, or I don't think the Canadian. By the way, Paul, fit to be tied out, if you want to tell me about some Canadian apples, whether they're identical to the US, I'm not sure if they are, but uh, that would be interesting to hear. Uh, another interesting one is the wildlife Yugoslav. Again, they just ignored the sleeve from the UK and the US and put it out on green apple, which I think is a wonderful piece of continuity versus the group days, and i always on the lookout for seeing uh, that kind of thing. Yugoslav, rock and roll, most noticeable for the very greyish apple on this. don't think I've seen a greyer apple than that. Uh, so interesting to have to pick that up. This, none of these were particularly expensive. Um, as I say, they're quite common in this part of the world. And here's an interesting shaved fish because the cover has been censored and the picture of woman as the nigger of the world has been blacked out. So that was worth picking up just for that. And then we move on to some German pressings. Material World, George Harrison. In US and UK, you had the Hare Krishna label. In Germany, you had the beautiful, look at that, just wonderful light green apple. I think out of, out of all the apples, I might prefer the German the German one, I think it's really, uh, really nice to look at. And then we've got the Mind Games Lennon, also from Germany. This is my son's copy. And uh, what's interesting about this, they start the, the typeface so low on the apple that you can hardly read the word John Lennon. It's buried at the bottom in the dark there. <laughs> the same with here. On the, so it's a nice concept because they wanted to keep the apple, you know, print free as it were and just minimize the amount of print on it but uh, unfortunately you can't read John Lennon's name well, obviously we know whose album it is we're buying from the from the front cover but um, put that way later uh, then I thought I'd show you this shave fish German pressing because it's got the greatest hits not actually a sticker it's in built into the sleeve and again it's in really nice condition. There's something about German second-hand records where they're really well looked after for the most part. And this is a really nice paper, plastic inner lined um, sleeve and, and the record in good nick. Uh, so I was very happy to, to find that a week or so ago here in Budapest. It wasn't that expensive. Then this is a bit of a curio. This is a Greek copy of Goodnight Vienna. And uh, normally you've got the Milky Way cover, but here in Greece it was released on Apple, which I was delighted to find three or four years ago here in the, the second-hand record shop. Always on the lookout. Apparently there's a, a version of Dark Horse from Germany. Some pressings were that, for that were on the Green Apple. Uh, also you can get South American, Uruguay, Venezuela, Pressings of Venus and Mars and Red Rose Speedway on Apple. So I, I'm on the lookout for those. In fact, I did order the Red Rose Speedway on Apple from some guy in Venezuela and I paid $30 for it. And uh, it, it never arrived. The guy just disappeared. And despite my protestations, he just vanished. So that was disappointing. It's kind of put me off buying from Venezuela. But uh, this is a French copy of Ram. And... Uh, I think that typeface is quite familiar because I seem to remember I've got an Odeon French copy of Rubber Soul with the, where the typeface is similar. So um, it's not my favourite typeface to be honest, but uh, that's interesting to have a French copy. And then this is my French copy of the Blue Album, which I think is identical to the um, 
UK, US. But what's interesting about this is the blue background. And obviously I, I do have the coloured vinyl as I've showed on previous videos and uh, I'm not going to show it on this video. There's too much stuff to, to get through. But uh, so that's, what's that French? And then we move on to, if I can find it, Australian. This is my Australian Let It Be, which for some reason the, the sleeve is a little bit too small for the record. And uh, which I found a bit puzzling, but uh, this is the Australian Apple with the word stereo in huge letters again. Um, nice to have, but interesting that the sleeve is a little bit too small for the record. As you can see, it's poking out there. Um, picked up these copies of Abbey Road on uh, coloured vinyl in Camden a few years ago, thinking I uh, struck lucky <laughs> because one of them was on red vinyl. And uh, I thought, well, this is great. This is, it says uh, officially produced by EMI Australia on the back. Um, here, New South Wales. And, uh, and then I kind of smelt a rat because in the same shop there was a, a green vinyl one. And then I did a bit of research on the internet just now and I, I think the balance on balance these these are probably bootlegs i don't think emi australia officially released beatles albums on colored vinyl if any of you down there want to tell me different i'd be delighted to hear and i, I hope they aren't bootlegs but i ha rather think they are because they were only selling for 10 or 12 quid each so i have a feeling if they if they were legit the price would have been a lot higher this is my australian copy of sentimental journey and uh Again, slight, slightly different apple there from down under and a lot lighter sleeve as you see. And then we've got various color apples like John Lennon Plastigona Band on the white apple. Got the famous um, statement from George Harrison, the reason the Beatles split up is because Paul wanted the apple to be green, John wanted it to be white. Ringo wanted it to be blue and I wanted it to be orange, which was tongue in cheek, but it's kind of uh, amusing. And then this single back off Boogaloo is worth showing just because it's the only blue apple out there, uh, which is very interesting. I kind of wish that they'd put out an album on blue apple because it looks kind of nice. Um, and then we've got George Harrison, All Things Must Pass, came out on uh, orange apple. In the UK, it was a double-sided orange apple. Um, and was really, really nice packaging on that. And then in the US, this is my US copy, which I picked up in Florida the other year. And it was cheap because it was missing one of the records. It only had two out of the three records, but uh, they were only charging $3. And what's interesting about this is the orange apple is sliced on on the back, whereas in the UK and the U, uh, UK it's the double-sided orange. So that was uh, interesting. And then Ringo Starr, so similar to the Let It Be US, uh, this Ringo Starr compilation from 70, late 75 is on double-sided red apple. So Let It Be was on a sliced red apple. So this is unique and it's the only double-sided um, red apple. Um, I've got loads of non-Beatles Apple albums like Mary Hopkin, signed by Mary Hopkin on the back at the launch party to postcard at the post office tower at the top of post office tower in February 69. Uh, we've got Jackie Lomax uh, which came out in 69 with George Harrison, Paul McCartney, Ringo featuring Billy Preston. Uh, that's a UK pressing. We've got the Beatles, Hey Jude, with the, the original title of the Beatles again, which is quite rare because um, it became known as Hey Jude, but this copy is called The Beatles Again, which is a terrible title, but it's of historical interest that I've got the original uh, title there on the record before they changed it. This is the UK uh, Magic Christian Badfinger with the extra two tracks, Angelique and Give It a Try. Um, it's my copy of um, No Dice from Badfinger. It's a US pressing. Um, this is my copy of Yoko Ono Plastic Ono Band, um, signed by Yoko. Uh, another Mary Hopkin from 71. Um, it's my UK RAM 
with the lucky to have the original apple in the sleeve here and just just beautiful to see this on UK Apple because I when I bought it in the late 70s the, the copy for sale in the UK shops at the time was not Apple it was on capital because probably because Paul was pissed off with Apple or something um, then we've got this really nice pressing of uh, US pressing of um, straight up in absolutely immaculate condition. The guy who sold it to me in Brighton was saying this guy must have kept it in the freezer or something because it's it's literally in mint condition. So that's beautiful. Um, Mary Hopkin, uh, those were the days. That compilation from 72, Loss and Derek Van Eaton. So Loss and Derek Van Eaton played guitar on Goodnight Vienna and Rotter Gravur. And this is their Apple album, US copy. Elephant's Memory, who played with John and Yoko. That's their album produced by John and Yoko. Uh, Approximately Infinite Universe from Yoko. Bad Finger, signed by Joey Molland on the front there. This is a US Apple. Uh, another Yoko, Feeling the Space, signed. Um, that's on quite a nice apple, green apple. Her previous albums had not been on the green apple, but this one was. One of the last non-Beatles albums, along with Ass, to be released on, on Apple. Um, and then in 96, they released, they re-released some Apple albums. I've only, this is the only one I've got. Andy Brooks, you showed your whole collection of that. And that was interesting because vinyl was obviously not selling anything, but they put out these for the collectors. And I, unfortunately, I didn't pick them up at the time at all. I just happened to find this secondhand Beautiful to have ass on a nice UK apple. I, my other copy is uh, US apple. So that was a little trawl through my apple collection. Um, hope it wasn't too long-winded and hope you enjoyed it. And uh, we'll see you next time.